Spiky bits. Hey everybody, MBG back again with a first look unboxing and uh, I guess uh, review slash comparison of the new Chaos Hellbrew model. Uh, this of course being the multi-kit, uh, multi-part version of the uh, Chaos Hellbrew model that came out, I guess it was August or September, two years ago, give or take. <laughs> it's hard to remember, you know, these come out with so much stuff these days, it's uh, it's all just kind of blurring together. Uh, that really wasn't a multi-part kit, uh, it was just kind of like a, hey, it's this pose, and he's got a multi-melta, but we know you can take more, um, but you get a multi-melta. So, it wasn't that big of a deal, I guess, because it wasn't such a groundbreaking, super competitive model that we really needed, you know, a lot of kit bashes and things for it, but uh, eventually they followed it up with this model, which I guess wasn't sculpted by the uh, original artist either. So that was that was kind of interesting because it really, uh, it seems like it kept a lot of the character of the original um, Snap Together Hellbrew, I guess we'll call it. Um, so... <laughs> So it's a it's a pretty neat kit. It's got a ton of weapon options, six different heads, I think eight different weapon arms. Um, I put it together, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, you can't really switch out a lot of the arms unless you do some work, but there's uh, still a few surprises. So we'll uh, we'll kind of open this thing up and take a look at it here. Now, like I said, I've already I've already put it together, so um, the, not everything's going to be on the sprue, but you know you can use your imagination there. It does come with a brand new decal. Uh, transfer sheet, which you can kind of tell from the picture there, it's just as large as the box, and it's just kind of this new style. It really reminds me of like, I don't know, uh, Apple's uh, Apple Seven operating system. Like if you have the iPhone, it just kind of really reminds me of that old '70s kind of style look. I don't, I don't know if that's what they're trying to do, but I mean, it's cool because you get look at all his decals on there. Um, that's really cool because you know if you're playing one of those factions, you definitely want a lot of those. But like I said, it definitely reminds me of that uh, <laughs> iPhone 7 operating system. Uh, then the actual instruction instruction manual is uh, quite a bear. But if you're going to put this thing together, you definitely need to follow it because the uh, shoulder arm socket things, which you kind of see right here, uh, definitely depend on how your weapons point when you when you assemble it all. So that's uh, this is definitely one of those kits that you want to follow the instructions on. Uh, don't mess it up because it'll be very difficult once you assemble the actual uh, chassis of the model to go back. Uh, it's three sprues, which was kind of interesting. I mean, I guess with the price, you kind of would think that. Uh, the, here's the first sprue. This was basically one of the weapon sprues, and it had a lot of the, um, the armor plating and things. There you can see the uh, six different heads at the bottom of the sprue, and then I've still got the uh, the power fist. And it looks like the rocket launcher as well on there. I really like that rocket launcher because it reminds me more of the one that's the uh, the apocalyptic rocket launcher that's on top of the Titan. Uh, there's the thunder hammer arm as well as the uh, twin, looks like the twin auto cannon turret. I can't really tell. I think so. And then, of course, the multi-melted down at the corner that probably nobody wants because all of their hellbrews already have that. Oh, so that was the auto cannon. There's the uh, last cannon turret there. And the other power fist, as well as some of the uh, power fist gauntlets there. Dreadnought close combat weapons, whichever you want to call them. So make sure that when you're assembling this, uh, that you, the shoulder, let's see, that's actually the correct placing there, right there. Uh, that you actually assemble that correctly, because however, whichever one of these you use is going to uh, determine how, if you're, uh, weapon points up or points down. So here's the actual Hellbrute model itself. And let's get you, let's get you close up here and change the focus. Um, I'm actually really, uh, really proud of this model. Uh, it's very, uh, very well done. Of course, it's on the original 60 mil base, so you know it's, uh, it's still the normal size. There's the new plasma cannon, which is modeled after the. Uh, Forge Fiend ones, and the Plasma Scourge, which looks way better than anything they've ever been able to do in Pewter. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the old uh, Pewter Chaos Dreadnought, but it was uh, it looked like a rake. <laughs> it was a power rake. We'll just call it a power rake. So that's the kit. Like I said, you can switch out the uh, you can switch out the top cowl here for three different horn variants. There's six different heads as well that can go in there. 
um, all the armor plating and things around the legs are separate. These cables on the back are separate and there's specific ones depending on which way the, uh, the arms are pointed as well. This spine is very interesting. It's, uh, I don't know, yeah, I think you got it in focus there. So it's, uh, it's one separate piece which kind of semi-locks into the, uh, the sockets around it as well. So it's, it's very well detailed. This kit is insanely detailed. Um, it's amazing what they can do with the computers. I kind of did it at this little, like, yo, I'm running at you pose kind of thing. The legs, not so, not so much. They're very static and just kind of there. But you can do, you can get a lot of movement out of the, uh, out of the torso and the arms as well. So I assembled it with the power scores and the plasma cannon just because I think, uh, well, I don't know. Those are two things that they never really did well, and I'm pretty happy with how they, how they did it there. So let's take a look at some of the other, um, kits that are out there these days and how they stack up. Uh, this, of course, is a, a World Eater's Dreadnought from Forge World uh, with two uh, chain fists, it looks like. And from what you can see there, they definitely are about the same size. Of course, he's a, a little boxy. We'll call him Boxy Brown. Just kind of showing there. Not really sure uh, you know, if he was made on a computer, but it doesn't appear to be this guy obviously on a computer he is uh, super incredibly dynamic and um, I don't know I guess if they had a specific legion variants of that guy I would definitely 100% uh, always recommend buying the uh, the Hellbrute um, I wish Dreadnoughts were a little bit better for Chaos but <sighs> alas they're not and one more comparison to make just so you get the overall picture about how big he actually is of course is a Dread Knight, the arch nemesis of the uh, the chaos there. So you can kind of see about how big that everybody is right there. Again, it's a cool kit. Uh, definitely keeps to the uh, keeps the flavor of chaos, keeps the tradition alive, so to speak. It's a little 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 crazy on the mutations, but that is chaos. You know, if you're if you're doing Iron Warriors or Ward Bears, I guess you might not want that, but Hey, it is what it is. It's a great kit, uh, very cool multi-part kit, and hopefully we'll see some sort of uh, maybe rules update or something like that in the Crimson Slaughter book. It's it's really hard to say at this point, but uh, one never knows these days from Games Workshop. Just uh, if you know if, if you don't like the way something works, just wait a little bit longer. Yeah, it'll change. It'll be it'll be okay. So that's it for this one. Make sure you stay in the trenches. Uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out the blog SpikyBitsBlog.com, and uh, listen to our podcast ForgeNarrative.com. Spiky bits.